Hello everyone! Welcome to my YouTube channel. I never thought I'll be making such videos, but here I am. If you find my videos fun, interesting or both, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Long story short, I am 110 Eviscerator. And here are some basic class information you need to know if you wish to start playing the Ultimate Fist Fighter class. So, so let's jump right into it. Uh, as you might know already, Eviscerator is a, a class born from a RTA race. It can only be a female character. Not so many special hairstyles. A few look cool and uh, sweet, but that's it. Uh, when looking at the Arteria class, uh, sorry, race characteristics, we can see that it doesn't really have anything that special. The only special thing about it is its high strength. In comparison, the highest uh, strength, the base stat in strength has uh, Dark Elves, and the second ones are actually Arteria, which a lot of people might not realize. This is what makes uh, Eviscerator a strong melee DPS class as it as it already has a high base strength. When choosing a Arteria race uh, it could be a wizard and it's called the uh, Saya Seer. I have tried it, I personally didn't like it. It the gameplay felt I don't know, clunky and something was missing and it felt a lot of like melee class without attacking uh, the class has like one spell, and uh, yeah, you're free to free to try it out and uh, see yourselves. But uh, yeah, anyhow, let's get back to Eviscerator. So let's uh, skip everything else since there is nothing much to tell, and the best way of learning things about class, I think, is by playing it. Like I mentioned before, my main class is uh, Eviscerator. Currently, I'm uh, level 110. I do a lot of solo content. I prefer using Eviscerator's power and strength uh, to solo while farming experience because I, I find it quite efficient. And uh, this is probably because of my gear I have, but I'll get back into it a bit later on. To begin with the understanding of Eviscerator, I think it's best to look into its skills. <coughs> so, the way I decided to choose to play this class was pretty much go full auto attack mode, which means I use as less skills as I can just to be able to land as many hits as possible. One of the three, uh, main traits for the Eviscerator class that uh, allows you to deliver a huge amount of damage is one of its passives. It's called the uh, Heavy Punch. And uh, as you might know or not uh, yet, but uh, the way it works, there is a certain uh, timer or like uh, after every few hits uh, there's a chance to trigger this passive which deals 30% uh, of uh, HP as a damage. Just uh, to, to understand it as well, one thing I thought was different that uh, if you think a monster has 100% HP it doesn't mean it's uh, uh, you need to trigger it three times because <coughs> uh, it does 30% of HP as damage from the current HP it has, so so it's de decremental every time uh, the monster's HP goes down. And as well, it doesn't work on uh, raid monsters and the raid bosses, as far as I know. Uh, so to begin with, uh, there is only pretty much one uh, skill that is. Uh, physical skill that is quite can be quite used and uh, uh, taken advantage of which is lateral hit which just decreases the cooldown 
uh, sorry, decreases the physical defense of the monster. As well, uh, it has barely no cooldown and the uh, attack speed of it is quite good. Uh, other skills you are free to explore and read about but this guide uh, focuses on uh, presenting the most efficient and uh, very basic guide of a class that could perhaps help you decide play it. So let's continue We're talking about uh, skills and uh, uh, as, as can you see there are a lot of reinforce reinforcement skills for Eviscerator such as uh, gravity tower, distortion and fluid weed and so, and so on. The two most important skills of this class from the reinforcement skills in my opinion is uh, Mind of Steel uh, and Gravity Tower. As well distortion is... Uh, okay, there are three main skills. So it's pretty much all it does is gives you a gravity tower gives you a permanent amount a permanent buff for and you can see physical attack 40% and and such a distortion is a very unique skill because it makes all your attacks appear from behind as well it gives you a certain boost as you can see uh, when it comes to this distortion skill it is very important to to, to notice in your ability tree that you have one ability called Berserker's Backfire which means all rear, rear damage is increased by 5% so basically what Distortion makes it gives you it uh, even if you're attacking from the front it will appear as an attack from the back and on top of that it, the damage will be increased by 5% so it is very good to have it enchanted and uh, enchanted by time and as well having these two points in ability tree to have a slight amount of damage boost and lastly not least uh, the mind of steel is an incredible immortality skill that uh, doesn't let you die while the buff is active and you can see it's 35 seconds because usually it's 30 seconds but I have enchanted it to 5 uh, anyhow it's an incredible damage uh, booster and uh, as well helps you prevent death in time of need when it comes to defensive skills of uh, defensive reinforcement skills of Eviscerator the main, the main skills that you should look at is uh, fluid width Weave, uh, which pretty much gives you a few seconds buff uh, that lets you avoid certain skills and debuffs and just uh, dodge monster attacks. Uh, another interesting one is Palation, which increases your physical defense and uh, disables and blocks all attacks from ranged. So, for example, if you're doing uh, a solo instance and uh, ranged monsters. Uh, are shoot, shooting at you magic attacks while you deal with the melee ones first you can just simply enable it and uh, avoid all the range damage and lastly there is a gravity barrier which is pretty much immortality buff uh, just uh, a note that once you have it on you cannot heal as well at, at least that's what I experienced Next is uh, physical weakening skills, <coughs> which is, which are quite OP for Eviscerator, and it's uh, these two skills are one of the most important self buffs uh, when you play an Eviscerator. Just uh, to give you an idea, every time uh, uh, we use uh, left side step or right side step, we get a self buff which can have a three different levels and each level gives different power bu power buff so as, as you can see every time I recast it the level goes by one and in the end it sticks for 15 seconds and uh, as you can see the, the uh, damage boosts are insane 
Another booster that uh, Eviscerator has is a backstep. I don't really use it that much because it messes up with my uh, hits per minute. Yeah, it basically just increases your physical attack. Uh, one of the few other physical weakening skills I use is uh, is a heavy hand when I need to deal with a bunch of monsters and slow them down. It's a very fast uh, casting skill and it slows down monsters around you. Another is a reverse height, uh, reverse weight that just smashes the ground and knocks some monsters away. And uh, lastly, a warp space, which pretty much roots all enemies around if it lands and can help you escape or delay them while you're dealing with something else. So yeah, you feel free to explore more skills when you level up and try out the class. I don't think it's worth mentioning all the details as some skills are pretty straightforward. Uh, so just remember that uh, the most important ones are Lateral Hit, Gravity Tower, Distortion and Mind of Steel. And then with the best self buffs from, self -buffs from Physical Weakening is a uh, right side step. Next step into gearing our Eviscerator is understanding dual classes. I will not talk about dual classes as there is a lot of information about them online. So pretty much uh, if you are building an eviscerator with a, a auto attack build, uh, all you need is uh, attack level 2, berserker's rage and death. Lastly, regarding skills, uh, if you were to have some forgotten books, make sure you level up your physical attack, which gives you a percentage increase in your physical attack. The rest are, of course, important, but perhaps not as much as a physical attack. And don't forget, we don't have any magical attacks, so we will leave magical attack forgotten power untouched. Uh, and lastly, if your Adina or your budget allows you, make sure you learn at least first, uh, sorry, level six, level five with Divine Inspiration, just to get an extra buff slot, since you might have a lot of, uh, since you're gonna have a lot of self buffs and so on. In the finishing note of uh, skills, let's talk about some macros. I have experimented with lots of macros while leveling up and playing the class. Uh, some few that I tried were uh, a mess. A lot of people gave me a bad feedback on them and said I shouldn't use uh, slash attack and so on, but I found it quite uh, useful as lots of eviscerator skills displaces you and uh, moves you around the target or goes back backwards so having an atta uh, slash attack really helped me to reposition myself and right and go back into the fight real quick uh, nonetheless the most important as I mentioned before self buff is uh, while using right or left side steps so this is pretty much the only macro that I use at all times. And when the, there is some PvP I just smash in few skills. But yeah, that's pretty much it. For the basic build of uh, this uh, Eviscerator Auto Attack build, all you need is just right side step. If you think you are missing some survival survivability and you need a bit of toughness, you can also add in left side step which will make sure that your target is stunned. Uh, yeah, this follows with the back spin impact which also stuns the target and you can as well use lateral hit if you lack a little bit of damage. This will of course cost you a few uh, auto attacks and your critical hits but it is what it is, you have to adapt. 
Next step into our build, let's look into our inventory and equipment. So to begin with, if you finish the exalted quest line or just few quests, you will be getting some strength dice. Make sure you use them. My recommendation, if your budget allows you, you should get uh, strength plus five free dice uh, and accompany them with this so-called die powder. Die powder <coughs> pretty much uh, powers up your dice and by powering them up you receive additional skills. They can uh, Die powder can be found uh, in uh, any consumable trader. They are quite expensive so make sure you you buy them when you need them or if you can afford them at all times make sure you have dye powder at all times and to display and show what does it give you so every die gives a new special effect I have three dies and uh, each of them gives me a special effect when charged with dye powder so the first one increases my max HP, MP and uh, CP the second one gives me a huge amount of physical and magical defense in fact that's it's a lot and equals to uh, yeah one of the higher levels of talisman of protection and as well gives me a small XP boost and the last skill number three slot skill gives me a huge amount of uh, physical attack then percentage of physical attack and physical attack critical damage which is all this build needs physical attack critical damage Followingly, let's talk about Brooch. You will most likely have a Brooch level 1. So there are four main jewels you should aim to have, which is Emerald, Ruby, Red Cat's Eye, and Opal. Uh, yeah, Red Cat's Eye is quite expensive and do not feel bad if you cannot afford it. If you cannot afford it, just use one of the defensive ones, like Diamond or Tanzanite, if you happen to have one. But yeah, anyhow, uh, one of the goals of this build is to have Crater Ruby, uh, as in this video I have a 30 day one. It's quite uh, strong and it uh, yeah helps me beat everyone down. And another important gem is Red Cat's Eye, which gives me physical attack critical damage, which this build is all about. Yeah, and Opal just gives you physical attack attribute, and uh, Emerald just increases your stats overall. Next is uh, Bracelet. Uh, one of the main talismans that you should focus on getting in my opinion is uh, a talisman insanity which can be not sure if possible but can be dropped from field of crisis uh, time zone and as well uh, make sure you get the near talisman as high as you can next one is uh, Saya's talisman this one I received from the exalted gear pack is permanent and then I'm running uh, in a physical attack critical damage talisman which is 30 days one so yeah pretty much what you uh, when it comes to talismans you should focus on getting uh, abundance level one or higher talisman seven signs talisman insanity the nearest talisman Saya's talisman and perhaps another defensive talisman if you have slot or you can uh, also buy if you find any cheap ones uh, the same as I have <laughs> next uh, you will need a seed bracelet uh, one of the goals is to have at least two different uh, uh, Agathons uh, uh, and their slots First would be Scorpio and then Leo. Scorpio gives you Vampiric Rage which trains 
uh, HP from the monsters when you hit them and gives you a good amount of uh, critical damage. And when it comes to Leo, Leo doesn't have a special ability since it's a second slot uh, charm, but its unique ability it gives you 7% uh, of physical attack. And lastly, lastly from the accessories, uh, <coughs> uh, artifact book I think is very important thing in your inventory and in your build. You do not need to have a top grade or high grade artifact book if you can afford a level 3 book just from the trader just get it and then try to fill up the book with different uh, artifacts. You do not need to enchant them because they are really expensive to enchant. Your goal for basic build is to fill the book. Once you fill the book, you get level 3 set effect, which is 6% of damage, 7% damage reduction, and all stats plus 1. Next look into our build will be cloak, uh, circlet, and uh, belt and shirt. So to begin with, uh, I currently run the Nevitz Cloak of Light, which gives me defensive power and as well boosts my strength and other stats uh, by free. It is a 30 day version and after that I hope to get uh, Elmar Cloak. Elmar Cloak uh, has special abilities when enchanted uh, that uh, perman uh, permanently increases your PvE damage and as well triggers a skill that increases your P PvE damage by a lot. Next one, uh, I am running a Radiant cir Circlet of Authority. From the quest you will be getting one, but not uh, the highest uh, rank. Uh, it is very important to have one and make sure you wear it and upgrade it if you can, as it gives uh, very good uh, uh, stats. Next one is uh, the belt. Uh, if you happen to have a accessory pack for 30 days, you will be getting one. But your goal is to get Ruler's Authority, which gives you a lot of different uh, stats, such as damage reduction and inventory slots and so on. Lastly, uh, your goal, your really, really big goal is to get Dragon Rint Leather Shirt. As you, as some people might not understand how much difference it makes of having it. Uh, if you look closely into stats, you can see the huge, huge stats it gives. It can as well be augmented, which is very super expensive. And I don't wish you do that because I wasted a lot of gold on that. Uh, a lot of Adina on that. So yeah, pretty much uh, focus on upgrading your shirt, your circlet, getting a belt and getting some sort of cloak. You can as well run a, a exalted cloak which is not as good but it's better than nothing, right? Uh, as well it's don't forget to get a yeah, sigil. Each class has a passive of sigil that gives you special stats and you can as well get a enchanted sigil to give you even more stats. When it comes to the jewelry on Eviscerator, uh, it's gonna be tough, but you either need to buy an exalted pack to get uh, jewels from the pack. Uh, let me just find and show it to you. Yeah, once you purchase. Uh, Blessed Exalted Light Armor Bundle, you will be getting uh, a jewelry and a nice ring and uh, nice rings, nice earrings and necklace and so on. But uh, if you happen to have a 30 day set of epic jewels, then it's amazing. The, st the stats are in insane. Other otherwise, if you have a lot of Adina and you want to buy some, I would recommend you buying uh, uh, 
lend your earring and find blessed Valakas if you have or if you can afford God's jewels and uh, fallen angel uh, ring plus 10 and angel ring at least plus 6 but yeah uh, that's it uh, about jewels and the most weighted part uh, and I forgot to talk about the mask uh, I'm not sure which mask I do need exactly yet, but I'm running plus three veterans mask because I cannot afford anything else. Just give some attributes and defensive attributes. But yeah, when it comes to the armor you need for your eviscerator, you should be focusing on getting a bloody eternal level uh, leather set which can either be grade of R99 or if you have a lot of Adina just by Leviathan which is R110 but remember that <coughs> R99 versus R110 is very cheap when compared uh, and there isn't that many in market especially cheap ones so if you don't have too much Adina just try to buying the R99 set don't forget you can as well augment it, the stones are pretty cheap and you can pull off some nice augment stats such as 1k physical attack and so on. And lastly, oh, let's uh, talk about armor if you can't afford uh, anything good and you, if you run with the blessed exalted set from the shop, make sure you get it to plus 10 as it's really really strong set and especially when enchanted and knowing that enchants from the shop are 100% chance you can buy 50 scrolls from the shop or from someone else and have an amazing armor set that will last you until very high level and lastly what weapon should you get my personal recommendation <sighs> is to run with the uh, exalted weapon with the uh, exalted uh, stage 1 Bay Greed special ability uh, you get as well uh, exalted Augment Stone if you happen to buy the blessed exalted set from the shop but other, other than that if you do not have Adina to buy anything that is at least plus 9 bloody Krishna fighter please stay with the exalted weapon and just keep farming Adina because it's actually a strong weapon and there isn't a huge difference between these two just of course uh, soul crystals make the difference but you get my point that if you cannot afford it right now don't be sad and just keep on using exalted gear one thing I forgot was uh, talk about uh, revelation skills you should get a hurricane shackle and you should get savage and you can do so by teleporting to Tokin Island village ruins of Ye Sagira Teleporting inside. Talk to the guy again. Go to the first exploration zone. And just run to this guy called Hadel. Once you talk to him, uh, just say I'm headed to the reliquary of the giants. And you will find these two NPC here. And all you need to do is talk to the monk of chaos and say I want skills so yeah there is few to choose from you can uh, pick undying will which will prevent you from dying once every one minute uh, five minutes and stuff like that but my personal recommendation is to go with hurricane shackle which uh, gives you a nice buff once used increases your uh, physical attack by 10% for one minute and then savage for one minute gives different stats 
So yeah, that's it pretty much about the build. Oh, one thing you can also try to get is buy a new weapon. Any weapon is fine and try to augment it with a giant skill. Uh, giant uh, augment stone and try to get the skill that increases your physical attack critical damage by 15% for 5 minutes just put it on and continue uh, so just to put to show you some of the gameplay and how I deal with uh, monsters I will show you how I kill few and I will be back once I find a spot so I haven't found any spot in Tanor, so I just went to Silent Valley to just show you how I farm. So as you can see, it doesn't, might not look anything special, but note that I'm not using any of my buffs, except inside position, which is generated by using sidestep, right sidestep. So yeah, still, I'm, and yeah, I can see I'm not using any rows, I accidentally popped Santiago's Royal Soup. But yeah, I'm not using any rows or any other, any other consumable at the moment. And we can as well pop our Giant's Augment. And if you notice this uh, huge hammer, this hammer that randomly pops it's the heavy bunch passive so yeah we can as well pop distortion and mine of steel which will make the farming even faster and you can see I took crit the monsters pretty much <coughs> yeah you can even speed this up by popping hurricane shackle you can see we have a hurricane sign buff then on top of that you can pop Abundance, Dragon Shirt, Rose, Honey Beer and see mobs are obliterated. You can barely see their health bar. So yeah, at this moment I am able to do one level 115 Castilia instance without dying or having big troubles mostly because of my gear I suppose but yeah feel, feel, feel free to try and <laughs> just for a disclaimer I'm not an expert in Eviscerator I have been playing Lineage for not so, not, not so many months 3 or 4 right now and just enjoying the game as uh, far as I can as much as I can and yeah, thanks for watching and if you got any questions please leave a comment and I'll be great to answer you. And as well if you have any preferences on eviscerator videos, show you up some farming zones, show you daily instance, I will probably make these videos later but feel free to ask for them as well. And thanks for watching, bye bye.